So good uh, morning. Uh, everybody set to go, I assume. Um, somebody said something back there. All right. I uh, want to make a few thank yous. First of all, thank you all for being here. We've had a great journey over the years, uh, speaking to one another about important issues facing the County of Los Angeles regarding crime, our successes, and the things we've tried to do. But I also want to thank uh, a couple people who certainly were instrumental in my life. Uh, first of all, Sheriff Peter J. Pitches, who promoted me to captain, and Sherman Block, who promoted me to division chief. Both of my predecessors were my mentor, mentors, my teachers. And as I always like to say, if you want to know who I am, I'm my teachers. And I've learned a lot. And I've been proud and honored to serve the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and the people of this greatest of counties, Los Angeles County, for the past 48 years. I can't even imagine anyone working 48 years at anything. But I've done that, which has made this decision in my life probably the most difficult. Uh, the duties of a sheriff are too complex and too mass to describe simply. But all the people of this county count. Everybody. And the men and women of the Sheriff's Department and I are dedicated to the welfare of the people of this county. It doesn't matter who they are, what their difficulties may be. They're always at the foremost of our thoughts and mine. So therefore, I have great gratitude to the people who have elected me. And at the same time that I was elected to four terms, I will go out on my terms. I'm not going to seek re-election for a fifth term as sheriff, and I will retire at the end of this month. The reasons for doing so are so many. Some are most personal and private. But the prevailing one is the negative perception this upcoming campaign has brought to the exemplary service provided by the men and women of the Sheriff's Department. They have conducted themselves with the utmost integrity and professionalism, resulting in yet another year of historic crime reductions in nearly half a century. In my opinion, your Sheriff's Department is the greatest law enforcement agency in the world. I want to thank the men and women. I want to thank the men and women of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department for their hard work, dedication, and their daily sacrifices to serve the great people of this county. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that we love the people of this county. And we do it every day, without exception. And to the people of the county, I extend my deepest gratitude for you allowing me to serve you for the past 48 years. It has been a true dream come true to meet so many incredible people of all races, all religions, all nationalities, and all status, especially care about the homeless, the mentally ill, and the people that are in challenges much greater than I've ever faced. And so in conclusion, as your elected sheriff for the past 15 years, I've held fast to the core values of this great department. 
And they are, of which every deputy remembers by heart, as I do, as follows. As a leader in the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, I will commit myself to only perform my duty with respect for the dignity of all people. The integrity to do what is right and fight what is wrong. The wisdom to apply common sense and fairness in all that I do. And the courage to stand against racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, and bigotry in all its forms. That's who I am. That's who we are. It's our great nation and our great nation's laws that we love and respect. Now I'll take a few questions. Uh, my decision is based on the highest of concern for the future of the Sheriff's Department. I have, to my knowledge now, two assistant sheriffs, James Helmold and Todd Rogers, who are highly qualified to run for this position and have the voters make their decision. As I mentioned earlier to some, I may have run 70,000 miles in my lifetime, but I know I'm 72 years old in May, and I don't see myself as the future. I see myself as part of the past. What's more important is to give others inside the Sheriff's Department a chance, who I know would not take the chance if I were to run again. And make no mistake, the voters of this great county and my supporters are willing to raise millions of dollars. But that's not the answer. The answer is the nobility of having served and knowing when it's time to let someone else. So that's my answer for why. Sir, sir, are you worried, though, you are resigning before the end of your term. Are you worried that you are about to be named in a federal criminal indictment? Is that People are going to speculate about the timing of it, why you are not resigning, or I should say retiring, after your term is over. What, what about that? Worry is not something I'm unfamiliar with. Every day of my life, I worry about the people of Los Angeles County. But you don't do these jobs to worry about yourself. All I want is a better future for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Chair, as recently as just yesterday afternoon, you were saying you were looking forward to the election. What happened that so suddenly seems to have impacted your decision today? Well, the timing is uh, something that I thought of because I didn't want to enter a campaign that would be full of contentious, negative, politicking. I wanted to realize within myself that there has to be another future for the Sheriff's Department. And I was confident that people inside the Sheriff's Department uh, are capable of doing this work. And I will, uh, in the interim, by the way, uh, after talking with all board members, uh, that I will recommend in the interim uh, that Assistant Sheriff Terry McDonald uh, be the individual uh, that holds the fort, as they say. Uh, so this is all about, in my opinion, doing what is right for the people of Los Angeles County. And that's the basis for my decision. Mr. Sheriff, is this a resignation or is this a retirement? It's a retirement. You know, retirement is a whole different world. I have grandkids. I mean, I have children. They're all adults, except for the grandkids. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's face it, uh, it's one hell of a title to be called grandpa. And you got to take care of those responsibilities. Sheriff, a month ago, you mentioned you weren't going to retire. Now you say you are. Can you tell us when the first thought of it in the last month? Was it over the holidays? When was it that you decided, I, I think I'm going to retire? 
I, I actually thought about it about three days ago. <laughs> so you can tell that this is not something that I really had in mind. But it's it's important to, to think of the department. It's not about me. This this job, ladies and gentlemen, this job has never been about me. This was a calling. I prayed to get this to be a deputy sheriff. You know, the greatest yes. title in my whole life will not be sheriff. It'll be deputy sheriff. The person who gets out in a radio car, works in the jails, gets up to the people. You see, the only reason I think I ever got elected is because I never got away from the people. Uh, I started with the people. I retired with the people. And if you were to ask me how many people have me on their Facebook pages, I'd say, well, I can't count that high. Because people just like to be touched by someone in law enforcement who cares about them. Whether you know them or not is not the point. But people count. Sheriff, do you have any regrets in light of the federal investigation and, and the scandals that happened? Well, I regret anything that causes the department's reputation to be uh, essentially put at question. You see, 18 people out of 18,000 people does not constitute a department. And there may be more. But a sheriff's department made of 18,000 people and then 4,300 volunteers and then another 900 reserves. You're talking about an organization that's well over 20,000 people involved, paid and unpaid. You're talking about a large institution of interactive services with the public. It's the public's department, not mine. I'm just a steward for the moment, and that moment will come to a close. Sure. Sure. What do you think has been your greatest accomplishment in your uh, my greatest accomplishment will be reducing crime, and yet you can't reduce crime without educating people who are incarcerated. Education-based incarceration has 8,000. We have 8,500 students going to school in jails. You see, people with broken lives generally have dropped out of school, and therefore, because of that, their development becomes skewed, and crime happens. But we have deputies teaching them how to live a good life and do it the right way with our merit program. That's the greatest thing I can do is to take people who cause crime and then prevent them from doing it again because of the educational opportunities that they lost when they were young. So that's a big deal right there. Low crime, record low crime in 50 years. I mean, I, I attribute pitches and block to my existence, but I'm not a singular defined person. I am my teachers and therefore I have this sense of accomplishment that I took as much as I could and gave it back to the public in a creative and daring way. Uh, and that's what it takes when you deal with people who commit crime. You're not, you can't be afraid of them. In fact, in law enforcement, you can't be afraid of anything. And I, and I, I hadn't mentioned this, but you, you see America needs Sheriff's departments like the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. We, we need this idea that our nation's laws are supreme and that the civility of our interactions from law enforcement to the public are done in a way that our core values that I recited for you are, are upheld. It's all about the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, civil rights, and human rights. It's no longer about who's so tough that everybody's going to be walking and tippy toeing around. No one should ever tippy-toe tippy around a cop or a deputy sheriff. We are your public servants, and we will always care for you at great risk to our own personal self. The voter should and sh should have the final word. Well, I've never been someone to think that I'm the greatest of anything. But I'm a very strong-willed individual who believes in constant creativity and constant growth. And the public deserves to have candidates that have similar things that I do that can go forward and carry on the legacy of the Sheriff's Department. It's the Sheriff's Department legacy that I'm most 
endeared to. Sir, not my not my own. Sir, are you endorsing are you endorsing those assistant sheriffs that you introduced earlier? I'm in announcing the their names to you so you'll get to get them in your stories. So who are you endorsing then? I'm not. I, I am looking at this from a purely stand aside point of view. But sheriff, you want to have anything to do does the timing have anything to do with its impact on the election? Signaling to others that may want to get involved in the election, for example. Changing the candidate field. You know the the. The, the, that's a good, good question. The, the idea of who will run. Let me tell you about this running for sheriff business. It's not. It's counterintuitive to the professionalism of law enforcement uh, to have to run for the office. In, in, in other words, raise funds and then do all the things that are necessary. I think what's ironic about my running for the four terms and winning is that you know how many people I ask for a donation. Three. The rest is done because people want to do something, not because you ask them to do something. And, and so th this is the challenge when you run for the office: is that you got to raise the money, and you have to have a lot of uh, goodwill uh, already in the bank. It's all about goodwill. And when people sense that the sheriff has a sense of goodwill for them, uh, they'll help you. Sheriff, why would you have to drop out of the election and finish your term that you were elected to? Well, I think that was an option that certainly I thought of. And the question was, uh, why not just serve out the rest of your term? I know the intensity of politics as good as anybody. I think I'm the longest elected official in the county of Los Angeles today. I don't know of anyone else. But when you get into the political arena and you compromise the values that I have spoken of. It's not the right tone for running for office. I would never criticize Sheriff Sherman Block. The media certainly did in that era when I ran against him. But I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for him. Nor would it be any other person who's in the rank structure if it weren't for that sheriff who held that position. And I'd rather hold on to the values that I described earlier than to compromise them for the sake of an election. It just doesn't work that way. Sir, do you, do you, do you believe you will be indicted, yes or no? Uh, I'm sure interested in why you would persist on a question I've already answered, but I'll say this. You never really have answered it, uh, sir. The answer is simple. You don't become a deputy sheriff when, if you're afraid. I'm not afraid of reality. I'm only afraid of people that don't tell the truth. That is a lot to be fearful of. Sheriff, you have been more than 10 years in the front of this department, and you're living in the middle of a controversy where the Department of Justice is investigating your department. You have 18 deputies that have been uh, already in front of the federal court, and they will start a process. And at the same time, a, a court finally uh, make you personally liable for the issues that were happening at the jail. Mm -hmm. So how much is the weight of that? And if, 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 next, if this next 23 days, what can you do to avoid that from happening once again? Let, let, me, let me clarify your points here a little bit. Let me tell you the answer here. Uh, I'm really pleased that everyone is here. There's so much media that it's really uh, amazingly important. But let me tell you this. I have invited the media to come to my office. I've invited the media to come to our jails to see everything for yourself. And we have the safest large jail in the entire country. And we have the statistics to back it. And the reforms that I supported are in place. And everything that is appropriate to how jails can be run at the safest and most humane way is in place. But you have to come in there and see it for yourself because nothing I say is going to be a, a certainty to you. And so your jails are in great shape. We take everything seriously that the Department of Justice has attempted to do. Uh, I've responded in full force with all of the information they need. Transparency matters to me. Cooperation matters. I have 50, excuse me, I have 20 plus deputies working 
in the FBI right now. The Attorney General's office is very, very uh, effective in working uh, what their issues are. And so the idea that somehow this is a big adversarial process, uh, to me, is something that uh, needs to be put to a proper perspective. What would be your message for all those people and families and civil rights organizations and when you resigned or retired a long time ago? People that have uh, the voice of whatever their concerns are are entitled to make them. Uh, people who say that uh, the Sheriff's Department needs to do this and do that are listened to. And what we say is we respect all people no matter what their positions are. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Yes. All right, we're watching Thank you. Sheriff Lee Baca. He's getting applause now from his command staff, which came out here. Uh, many of them came outside the Sheriff's Headquarters Bureau here to watch him announce that he is ending his career with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department after 48 years, the last 15 of them serving as the sheriff, the elected sheriff of Los Angeles County. He says he will be retiring at the end of the month. The reasons he gave, he says he doesn't want the campaign, the upcoming campaign, to bring a negative perception to the exemplary service of sheriff's deputies. I will go out on my own terms, said Sheriff Baca. There's been a lot of scandal uh, involving the Sheriff's Department late, lately. News about a federal indictment of 18 former and current Sheriff's deputies. Uh, some of the allegations involve uh, use of force, beating of inmates at the jails, uh, also obstructing an FBI investigation into misconduct at the jails. There's also been reports of hiring officers a couple of years ago, numerous officers who, despite the fact that background checks showed that they had serious misconduct, they got jobs anyway. That's been a big controversy. Uh, the sheriff today saying that he is resigning before the end of his term, and he was asked about that. Why now? Why are you doing it uh, before serving out the end? And uh, are you worried that you might be indicted, that you personally might be named in a federal indictment as well? And he really didn't answer that question. Uh, with a yes or no answer. He uh, said he was not afraid, but he didn't say whether that was part of his thinking in terms of his decision to resign. Of course, he did not endorse uh, another candidate for sheriff. The election's in June. He named a couple of assistant sheriffs behind him. Uh, but again, this, this whole throws the whole race wide open, essentially. Some people who may have been thinking about running for sheriff now that they know that Sheriff Baca will no longer be in office, uh, maybe giving it a second chance or a second shot. We're going to send it back to you in the studio. Well, and, and Eric, you asked him twice about the uh, possibility of a, a federal indictment coming his way, and, and you're absolutely right. He did avoid that question a couple of times, and he put this on the idea of a negative campaign, which was surprising. But uh, obviously, th there is more to the story. We will uh, hear more over the next uh, several days, and we will have some more reporting on this in our 1 o'clock show today. Yeah, Eric, we appreciate you and your reporting this uh, morning from Monterey Park. And of course, we'll have more coverage on our 1 o'clock as well as 6 and 10 p.m. news team coverage of Sheriff Lee Baca's retirement. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you a little later. Back to your regularly scheduled program.